Happy Sabbath, everybody. I don't know if you know this, but PUC has a rich historical tradition of service. We've had missionaries and service learning all the way back to the 1800s, and it's continued to now. But there's something more global connected to the Seventh-day Adventist institution that you are connected to by being here at PUC. We have groups such as ADRA, Maranatha, we have summer camps, we have service groups all over this world. And for the next few weeks, you're going to be seeing some of these commercials to sort of inform you of things that are going on. But not just to inform you, but if there are opportunities that you want to take to get into service, whether it's in long-term missions, short-term missions, or just serving your communities, please watch these videos. Either contact me in the chaplain's office or contact directly to the organization. I hope you have a great Friday. I hope you enjoy the videos and I hope you get involved. Have a great day. He has made everything beautiful in its time. Ecclesiastes 3.11 No one can fathom what God will do, what he has already done. The ministry of Leone Meadows is grounded in the holy knowledge that God has already promised to do indescribable, wonderful, beautiful things through us. He turns his followers into leaders, his hands and feet living proof of his awesome love. We show up at camp and God can hardly wait. Every summer our staff has the incredible privilege of playing with, laughing with, and growing with God's kids. And we have a lot of fun doing it, that's for sure. If you're looking for a place to call home this summer, a job that will challenge you and show you how your Heavenly Father makes everything beautiful in its time, join us at Leone Meadows. We sure can't wait to see you. Come on, it'll be fun.
And should the fire that once burned bright become an ember my eyes can't see, I will remember your sacrifice. I will abide in your love for me.
You make me pray. 
Good evening. Um, it's really great to be with you uh, this evening, and I want to thank uh, my friend Drew for the invitation to uh, speak to uh, students at uh, PUC. I hope you're doing well. These are crazy times we're living in, and and uh, you will never forget uh, the 2020-2021 school year. Uh, it's something that the world lasts long enough. You'll tell your kids and grandkids about um, how you manage uh, through uh, this this time period. I want to talk to you uh, this evening about putting first things first. Um, a few years ago, I was invited to attend a, uh, a seminar on time management. And uh, the seminar taught basic time management skills and how to be more effective at getting things done. And it proposed that one of the best ways to get things uh, done or to be effective is to get the right things done at the right time, putting first things first. In order to do that, the effective time manager has to prioritize his or her task. That's what's most important is to prioritize uh, the time. And so uh, this was illustrated by taking a jar, uh, kind of like this. It was quite bigger jar than this and to fill the jar with uh, rocks and to fill the jar with sand. And so what they did at first was to fill the jar with sand first and then try to get the rocks in. And they weren't able to get the rocks in because there was too much sand. So they said, well, what if we did it a different way and instead uh, put the rocks in first and then put in the sand? Well, of course, that worked. If you put the rocks in first, then the sand will fill in all of those gaps uh, where the rocks are. And so the illustration, the point that they were making was that if you prioritize the big things like the rocks, then the other things like the sand, the smaller, because we know that sand is like broken down rocks, the smaller things will be able to fit in your schedule. That, Illustration stuck out in my mind um, to this day to remember to put the first things first, to try to prioritize. As a student, that's that's not easy to do, um, to always try to get, you have so many things that you're juggling to try to prioritize. But uh, there's a scripture passage that I have loved over the years, and it's found in Matthew, the book of Matthew, the gospel of Matthew, uh, chapter 6. And Jesus is speaking here, and I want you to hear, I want you to hear his words and see if you can get an idea of what he is talking about as it relates to putting first things first. It starts with one verse, but it goes, it's, it's in the middle of a long passage uh, by Jesus where he is speaking. But he says these words, and maybe they're familiar to you when he says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Don't we know that to be true? Each day has enough trouble for its own. But think of that, seek first. So here's Jesus trying to tell us to make the kingdom of God a priority in your life. And as you do the other things, the, the sand, <laughs> those other little things will come into line. Those lesser priorities will come into line. Seek first the kingdom of God. 
In this scripture passage, which is found in what is known as the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus, in essence, is really pushing for the kingdom of God to be a priority in the life of his followers, of his disciples. See first God's kingdom and his righteousness. The kingdom of God is a major theme in the Gospel of Matthew, and it's described in various ways by the number of parables found in that same gospel, especially in Matthew chapter 13. You'll find a number of different parables there. And these stories, these parables, give us kind of a, tell us, tell us the nature of the kingdom of God, that it's dynamic, that it is moving, that it is full of life, that it is growing. However, no better description of the kingdom of God is given than that which is found in the passage of scripture that are known, that are known as Christ's Sermon on the Mount. So for you Bible scholars out there, that's Matthew chapter 5, goes to Matthew chapter 7. And in these passages, Jesus, Jesus describes not only the dynamic nature of the kingdom, but how those who would be citizens of that kingdom would go about living their life from day to day. So what is the kingdom of God? Well, the kingdom of God, in essence, it is God's rule. It's God's authority. It's his lordship over all in your life. And the citizens of that kingdom pledge themselves to live under God's divine authority. In other words, it is when you are a citizen of that kingdom, that means the values of that kingdom are more important than anything here on earth. So you might be an American citizen or you may be a citizen from another country. But when you are a follower of Christ, your first citizenship is being a citizen of God's kingdom. So John the Baptist made way for the coming of the kingdom and Jesus Christ actually began to usher in the kingdom, God's rule on earth. So when Jesus came to this earth, he was in essence setting up that kingdom of God. And Jesus' earthly ministry demonstrated in essence, what the kingdom of God was really like. And he invited people to become citizens of that kingdom. That was the purpose of what we find this Sermon on the Mount that's recorded in Matthew uh, chapter 5 uh, through 7 of Matthew's Gospel. Jesus' kingdom is not an earthly one. Um, all those these citizens of his, uh, these disciples of the live on earth, but the effects of his kingdom are experienced here on the earth. And so the disciples are encouraged to pray um, in that famous uh, Lord's Prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So there's this dynamic nature to the kingdom of God. In essence, it has begun, but it's not fully consummated. Hmm. What does that mean? In other words, it exists now, but is not fully revealed in all of its glory and power. This will actually take place when Jesus Christ comes a second time. Man, I'm looking forward to that second coming of Jesus Christ where there'll be no more sickness, no more pandemics, no more death. We've experienced a lot of death in the, over this course of this last year. No more pain, no more suffering, um, no more violence, no more division and incivility. Um, when Jesus comes, what a glorious time that will be. And I'm looking forward to that. So citizens of that kingdom, in essence, we live between what has already come. Jesus has already ushered in that kingdom. But we're also kind of in that waiting period, uh, which the kingdom has not really fully come in all of its glory and all of its power. So we live between the already and the not yet. The supernatural nature and character of God's kingdom is confirmed by the words found in association with it, that that kingdom draws near to mankind, according to Matthew 3. It can come, it can appear, it can be active, and people can enter the kingdom of God, receive the kingdom, inherit it, possess it, reject it, look for it, seek it, preach it, pray for it, but only God can give it. That's the kingdom Jesus is saying, make that your first priority. Seek it first. And it's through this realm that Jesus invites his disciples. He invites his listeners. In that Sermon on the Mount, he describes in full detail what it is like to live as citizens 
of that kingdom, that dynamic kingdom. And that message still speaks to us today. It's not easy living as a citizen of that kingdom. It's in those words of Jesus that we also find the word that that uh, if someone um, hits you uh, on your cheek, they smite you on your cheek, you turn the other cheek. That's found in those words in the Sermon on the Mount. So the dynamic kingdom of God, living as a citizen of that kingdom, it's not easy at all. But that message speaks to us today, to all of us who would be citizens of that kingdom. Jesus makes a profound statement. He says, seek first that kingdom and its righteousness and everything else will come into line. Well, what's that everything else? That everything else is found in the verses that come before um, verse 33. See if you can understand what some of these are. He says, therefore, I tell you the truth in verse 25. Do not worry about your life. Do not worry about what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is life not more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today, and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So here it gets closer to that verse. So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things, well, what are all these things? Clothing, food, shelter, all these things, he says, will be added unto you. That's a profound promise. It is really making first things first. Putting God first. When you put God first, he will take care of all of your needs. I like what the psalmist says. It is David who says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor their seed begging bread. Man, in these uncertain times, these are really uncertain times. We wonder, many of us, if we're going to make it through this. It's really tough. But our eyes must be on Jesus the Christ. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Well, what is his righteousness? His righteousness is not just being right. It's also doing right. During this pandemic, it's given us as the people of God, followers of Christ, the opportunity to do good, to do righteously, uh, righteous acts, to help the poor. I've seen in so many of our churches around our conference of of. Um, of the Northern California Conference, so many people who, so many churches are feeding people and helping people. We have a church right now in our conference that's, uh, that it's, it's, it's giving, um, it's giving people uh, vaccination shots across uh, their area. Um, it's, it's using the church to do that, righteous acts. And so we have the opportunity to do good things God. Now, Jesus is not oblivious to the everyday needs of men and women, food, clothing, or shelter, but he also recognizes that life, my friends, is more than these. So that his followers are not distracted from the agenda of his kingdom, Jesus promises that those who make the kingdom their first priority will have all their needs met. It is the promise of priority. See, we can get so caught up with our own agendas and issues of life, of paying the bills, of Raising a family, raising a family, going to school, getting a job, keeping a job, keeping ourselves above water that we can miss out on what's most important. God's main purpose for our lives, that priority in our lives. Life is not about the material possessions. In fact, I've learned that God is not interested really in our being comfortable in this life. He's more interested in our character because that's the thing that reflects his kingdom. It's not about things. It's about following God's plans for your life. 
to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and recognize that everything else will come into line. And so in order to keep us focused, God promises to provide what we need. Sometimes it's just the basics, but often it's way more than we can possibly have dreamed. Isn't that the way God is? He's such an extravagant God. He gives us way more than what we can ever imagine or think. So I want to tell you, my friends, stay focused. Don't be distracted by the things of this world. Even as you pursue your degree, even as you get through those classes, stay focused. Recognize that your life can be a demonstration of the kingdom of, of the kingdom's power. That you, as a disciple of Jesus, are putting first things first. Make God your priority. Make the kingdom of God your priority. And you'll recognize that everything else will be added unto you. Let's pray. Father, I want to pray for my friends today. I want to pray that uh, through the challenges of, uh, of matriculating through school at PUC during, these, uh, during a pandemic, it's, it's tough. Doing classes online and trying to get work done. It, this has been a tough, tough time. We acknowledge that. But God, you still call to us and say, put the kingdom of God first and his righteousness and everything else will fall into line. What a precious promise of priority you make for us. And so God, bless each and every student. Bless each of us as we work to glorify your name, to build your kingdom. May this be our goal's desire. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. God bless you and may his peace be upon you.